There are so many topics and facets to mental health. So today we're gonna talk about loneliness. How many of you have ever felt lonely in your life? Yes? Man, if you have not felt lonely, I'm gonna come sit by you because I need to get your presence around me. Loneliness is one of the most miserable feelings that we can have. Sometimes it feels like nobody loves us. Sometimes it feels like nobody even cares if we exist. And then sometimes we can feel lonely even when we're in a crowd of people. We can feel lonely when we're surrounded by people. It's not the number of people that are around us that determines if we feel lonely. It's our relationship to those people. Everybody experiences loneliness at one time or another. And there's some common causes and there's some ways that we can combat it. So today we're gonna talk about that. What are some of the causes of loneliness and how do we fight back against loneliness? You know, some of the times loneliness is, we bring it on ourselves, right? And then sometimes it's, it's not our fault and it just happens to us, it's a circumstance. That's the condition in which Apostle Paul found himself as he wrote the second letter to Timothy. Paul was a dying man as he wrote from a prison in Rome and his good friend Timothy, and he urged him to come visit him because he was lonely. So today we're gonna to talk about four basic causes of loneliness. The first cause of loneliness, if you're taking notes with us on our church app or on your phone, is the transitions of life. Life is full of transitions and stages. The more we grow, the more transitions we have. The more we, we move on in our life, the more things that can produce loneliness. When, you know, we're lonely when we're born, and then we cry and we're cuddled, right? The first day of school can be lonely. Changing grades, changing classes can be lonely. Getting a job can be lonely. Starting a new job can be lonely. Being in a different friend stage, like maybe you're the single one and everyone around you is married, that can be lonely. Getting divorced is lonely. Retiring can be lonely. Some of you are caring for an ailing parent or an ailing spouse, and that can be lonely. And the death of a loved one is lonely. Paul is now in the final transition of his life, and he knows that his time is short. And he says in 2 Timothy 4, 6, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. As he spends his last days alone, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. He's alone in prison. And I would say that is a crazy transition in his life, yes? To be old and alone in this prison. We need each other for support. We can all be lonely. One of the surveys that came out this week was from Harvard. And I was reading it and it said that our young adults are experiencing unprecedented loneliness at an alarming rate. 61% of our young adults ages 18 to 25 said that they have suffered loneliness that has led to anxiety or depression. Y'all, we gotta go after our young adults. We have got to go after these kids who are changing. They're going from their inherited family to their chosen family. They're gonna be you know, starting new jobs and new careers. They've got new friends. And maybe they don't have those guardrails anymore. Maybe their family is in a different location or their family's trying to let them be adults. And what they do in that is they get lonely and they don't know how to reach out because it's not like it used to be. And so this season, we are so excited that we have pastors Bart and Lori High leading our young adult ministry. We're so excited because we know that our young adults need hey, support. It's me again, by the way, hi. Um, <laughs> No, uh, Lori and I experienced some of our biggest tests and trials when we were young adults in our, our 20s and early 30s. We, uh, we experienced, like, you've heard our story about, about our marriage, and that's when we experienced it was during that time. So we really feel a burden, I would say, and that's a word that is not used a lot in the church anymore is burden. We feel a burden for the young adults, 18 to 30-ish, we say. But what we're doing is we're bringing them together. It started as a small group, but we're, we don't know where it's going to go from here. We pray that it just, you know, after today, it just skyrockets. But um, we've, uh, last week we had 16 come in, and uh, 
and we met in kid life because you could chew the air because normally we're in our in our backyard but we're going to be we meet in our backyard on sunday nights at six we do worship we have a bible study and we just hang out and talk and then tonight we're actually baptizing some, a few in our pool yes. so uh we got about three about three who have signed up for baptism so listen if you are 18 to 30 ish if you are married single listen come out if you have kids bring your kids i have disney plus i have netflix i got hulu i'll put them in the living room and they can play with my dog for all. so we want you to come out lori lori stand up i don't know if they'll be able to see you but <laughs> <laughs> But it. Lori's going to be in the back. I'll be in the back after uh, at the end of our gathering. And we want to connect with you. So come find us and uh, let's talk. And we'll give you all the details where we're meeting, all that stuff. All right? Love it. Thank you, guys. We know that we all can be lonely. The second basic cause of loneliness is separation. When you're isolated apart from your friends, from your family, whether it's a career or the military or location, it can cause loneliness. Paul says to Timothy in verse 9, do your best to come to me quickly. He mentions his best friends and then says none of them are with him. His friends were with him all the time. Y'all, he was a people person. He had people with him everywhere that he went. And then here he's at the last, the end of his season, and he's like, where are my friends at? Like, come to me. And as you guys know, he didn't just have the opportunity to just reach out and, and call somebody. It took a long time for him to get to people or for them to get to him or for letters to go out. And he's all alone. And so he says, come to me. Twice in this passage, in verse 9 and verse 12, he asked Timothy to come. And then in verse 21, he says, do your best to get here before winter. Why is he saying that? Because he knows that his time is fleeting. And he wants his friend to come visit him before he goes to be with the Lord. One of the things that I've learned in this season of hardship with my family is that I was just too busy. When you are isolated and you are separated from everyone, things come into a new perspective. And for me, what I recognized was I was finding ways to be busy. And I wasn't just neglecting my, my immediate family. I was neglecting my extended family who live out of state and out of country. And what I learned was that during this season of separation, the Lord allowed me to use technology. We started on Marco Polo and new text threads and WhatsApp for my sister in Africa because I was alone. I was all, I had Jim and I had the kids, but I just felt this, the Lord just saying, you've got to do better. You've got to do better at having relationships and connecting with others. And so I began to reach out and apologize. And, and it just took away, the technology took away that sting of loneliness that we've all felt over the last 19 months. So many of you have walked through the pain of not being with your family during key moments during this pandemic. So many of you have been a part of the last moments of your family's life through technology, through FaceTime. So many of you have lost family members to COVID and you didn't get to be with your family at the end. You got to talk to your family through a screen with doctors and nurses, but aren't we grateful for even that moment? It was unbearable and we should never have to be separated from our loved ones in a time of that season. But God has allowed us the opportunity through technology to be able to at least be present in some way. And for me, it was just him reminding me that right now our hospitals and our nursing homes are tangible in loneliness. You can feel it. When I was in the hospital with COVID, you can feel it. You feel so alone. So my question to you is, who is lonely around you right now? Who can you use technology? Who can you use a text or a FaceTime or even write an old school card that shows up in the mail? When I was down, I don't know if you guys know Martha Thomas, but she does this stationery, and I would get like a letter every week, like this cute little card, and the kids loved it. They, I mean, they're like, Mom, this came for us. I'm like, yeah, that still happens in real life. <laughs> But who do you need to reach out to? Because y'all, time is fleeting. And we get to reach out to people and we get to bring support and love and care to people. 
The third basic cause of loneliness is opposition. Paul says in verse 14, Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. So in other words, not only is he sitting here in prison, but he feels like he's being attacked. We don't know what Alexander did to Paul, but what we know is that he's frustrated and maybe he was ruining his rep reputation. Maybe he's turning people against Paul. Maybe he's posting some ugly stuff on Facebook. We don't know. Y'all know. Y'all know y'all seen that. I was trying to be a joke there, but uh-huh. Y'all went, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, maybe I've done that or been a part of that. <laughs> the Greek word for harm in this verse literally means to oppose or resist. And he opposed him. Some of the meanest things that can be said are by little kids on a playground. Have any of y'all ever experienced that? Or maybe a post through social media or maybe a mean word said at a sleepover. It's that moment when you, whether you're a kid or a teenager, or maybe you're an adult who's had that done to them, and you just have this moment where it turns on you, and all of a sudden you feel opposed. You're not, you're not their friend anymore, whatever they say to you, but you feel alone. You feel manipulated. You feel embarrassed, humiliated. The temptation for us in those moments is to draw ourselves back, to go into a shell and to begin to put up walls. Oh, I'll never be hurt again. I'll never let that happen to me again. But God wants us to fight for that. He wants us to not let the bitterness and the resentment cause us to go down that path. Because if we allow bitterness and resentment to, to grow, then what the enemy does with that, it's like a spiritual playground for him to play games in our minds. And that's what he does. So we have to fight against the bitterness and the resentment. The fourth basic cause of loneliness is the most common. And it's the one that causes us the most pain. It's the loneliness of rejection. It's when you feel betrayed or you've been forsaken, you've been abandoned. Paul felt this way when he was deserted. In verse 16, he says, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. You can hear the pain in his voice. When things got tough, he's saying, everybody left me. Everybody abandoned me. Rejection is one of the most difficult things for us to handle as humans. This season, we have seen so many marriages fall apart. So many people are separated and they're struggling. And you feel that sting and that pain of rejection. And in this season, it just feels like you're all alone. And we wanna help you in that because we don't want you to feel alone. Maybe you're the one who was asking your partner, your spouse to fight for your marriage, for your relationship. And they just didn't want to do the hard work. And there was no restoration there. And so those, those roots of rejection begin to grow. And that's what we're going to talk about in just a moment. How do we get past that? Or maybe you're just minding your own business. And you're scrolling social media. And you see somebody had a party and they did not invite you. And you're like, what the heck is going on? And after you get past your rage and your frustration, then you begin to feel rejected. And I think that with social media, there's so many times where we allow what someone else is doing or we did not get included in to begin to cause us resentment and bitterness. And it also brings up those forms of rejection. But what we have to do is we have to reach out and we have to remember that we can't close ourselves in because we can become a shell. We can go, as Jim says all the time, he goes into his cave. We can do that when we're rejected. We run away and we hide instead of dealing with it head on. We have to have support. We have to have people who will pull us forward in those moments when they see that we're kind of pulling ourselves back and we're starting to hide. So how do we deal with loneliness? You know, during this pandemic, so many people begin to recognize that maybe they didn't love their job. Maybe there was areas of their life where they needed to branch out or they needed to stop doing that because it wasn't bringing fulfillment or they needed to move forward. They started new endeavors, new dreams, new friendships. There are good ways to fight loneliness and then there are some self-defeating ways to fight loneliness. 
One of the self-defeating ways is to be a workaholic. For us to get up in the morning and put everything we have into our job and we work all day long and then we come home at night and we fall into bed so exhausted. We don't even know what we've done with our day. I can say that that will lead to physical and emotional burnout. Trust me, I just went through eight months of trying to figure that out. Why did I fill this void? Because I was putting myself, my whole energy into things that I didn't need to be putting my whole energy into. Some people try materialism. I'm just gonna buy all the stuff because it makes me happy, right? Anybody know anybody like that? Maybe you're that person and you're not raising your hand right now. (laughs) You wanna buy all the things, right? Because if I have all these things, it's gonna make me happy. But if you were on a deserted island and you were told you can have everything you want but you have no human contact, how long do you think that would last? Let's ask Tom Hanks and Wilson, (laughs) right? He had to make him a person because he was all alone. We were created and designed for human connection. One of the worst punishments that can happen to someone is for them to be placed in solitary confinement because they're alone. God never created us to be alone. He created us for human interaction. We need people. One of the other self-defeating ways of loneliness is comparison. We have this little thing called social media, as I've talked about many times because it's relevant in our current circumstances, where we begin to watch someone else's feed and it presents to us such a skewed view of what is happening in their life. And if we allow it, we started out, you know, just looking and watching, oh, I just wanna know what's happening in their life. And then before long, if we're not careful, it leads to self-judgment, low self-esteem and negativity. Some other people choose different methods of dealing with loneliness. Maybe you've had an affair. Maybe you stepped outside your marriage. Maybe you turned to drugs and alcohol. Maybe you project yourself into a fantasy world where you binge watch TV and you read all the books and then you get lost in social media comparing yourself to everybody else's lives. There's so many ways that we can spiral into loneliness. Or maybe you're just, you know, throwing a pity party for yourself, right? Any pity party throwers in here? We're going to talk about that in just a second, so hold that thought. But Paul did four things to combat his loneliness, and these are just as appropriate today as they were when he was in his days of loneliness. So we're going to talk about how do we combat loneliness. So if you're taking notes with us, the first point is to utilize your time wisely. Utilize your time wisely. Make the best of a bad situation. Resist the temptation to just stop. That brings like paralysis. Think of a creative way to take advantage of your time. Get outside for 15 minutes and take a walk. I remember when I used to be in creative, we would take a break and we would just walk around the parking lot because we just needed to get outside and it does something to our brain and it also helps us with loneliness. Maybe journal. Find a new hobby. Join a life group. Find a way for you to reach out and do something that sparks your soul so that you're not just sitting there just brewing on the loneliness. Paul said in verse 12, I sent Tychicus to Ephesus, and when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. He refused to sit around and mope. He didn't sit in prison and say, oh, poor me. What about all these churches that I started? Am I gonna die in this prison alone? No, he said, bring me my coat so that at least while I'm here, I'll be warm. I will say that as much as I love the Apostle Paul, y'all, I ain't him. Because when I was down on my back, I threw a pity party. I was so alone. I just felt lonely. I couldn't do anything. For four months, I was on, bre- on bed rest. I couldn't take care of our home. I couldn't take care of our kids. I couldn't take care of my husband. I couldn't take care of you guys. I just felt alone. I felt like I had been ripped away from this life that God was creating me for, and I just didn't know how to process it. And so in those beginning moments of bed rest, I couldn't even read a book. Like, 
I couldn't even think about self-help, okay? I was exhausted. I tried to watch TV and it just wasn't fulfilling me. So I began to try to figure out ways. When you're on bed rest, there's just not much you can do. I don't know if you guys know that. So I started going through social media and I, you know what I began to do is I began to mute people. People who were not bringing me joy. People who were causing me to have anxiety and frustration or comparison. I began to mute them. And so what I did was I began to start following accounts for me in that time that sparked creativity in me. Things that I'm interested in. And it began to kind of reawaken the things in my soul. And, and talking with Jim and talking with the kids, it was just a season, it was a process. And I know that so many of you are in this season. And I just wanna say to you that as I was praying about this message, I just wanna say that's okay. It's okay if that's the season that you're in and you feel like you don't know what to do with how you're feeling. There is no shame in that. For me, I took it as shame that I couldn't pull myself out. Camilla, you're stronger than this. You know how to do this. Get yourself together. But it began to eat at me. And I just wanna say to you that God is bigger than that. God is with us. He is there to carry us through every single circumstance. His strength is made in our weakness. So in that moment when you're lonely and you feel like I can't reach out, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to get past this, just remember that God is with you. He is for you. He is just waiting for you to ask him to join you in the loneliness. Sometimes we don't take care of ourselves when we're lonely. We don't eat right. We don't exercise. We don't do the things we're supposed to do. Anybody else been in that season? Ooh. But Paul says in, in this passage, he says, bring my coat and my books, and I'll capitalize on this lack of interruption. He's saying, I'll use it for study time. You know, he's a church planner. So he's been out like preaching in the Colosseum. He's ready to do this thing, right? Like he's out and just, and then he gets put in this prison. So now he's like, well, bring me my stuff and let me start creating in here. And it's great for him because although he was alone and he was in prison, we got part of the New Testament out of it. And so for us, you know, he, he's saying, if I can't be out there, then I'm gonna do what God's called me to do in here. And I felt that for me in this season, God used that season of separation to challenge me in some things. I was pulled away from the everyday distractions. I was pulled away from the everyday tasks that seemed to consume my time. I was pulled away from the ministry. And God began to wreck my heart, if you will, while he was healing me. And he began to say, Camilla, you're doing things that are distracting you. You're doing things that are keeping you from doing what I've asked you to do. So he began to work on me and he began to show me the things that I needed to let go and the things that I needed to focus on. And some of them were painful. Some of them were hard. They were hard lessons to learn. But for me in this season, I just remember that sometimes, you know, when God pulls us away, it's not to punish us. He's pulling us away because he wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to hear what he's instructing us on. And for me in that season, he needed to get me alone with him because there were some practices that I needed to focus on. I had gotten a little laxed in some of my daily devotion time. I had gotten a little laxed in some of my prayer time. Anybody else felt like that? That you just feel like in this season you're struggling in that area. But God is with us and he just wants to talk to us. The next thing that we should do to combat loneliness is minimize the hurt. Paul says in verse 16, no one came to support me, but may it not be held against them. He had a lot of time on his hands and he could have been very resentful. Nobody wants to be around somebody who's bitter and complaining. And I know that at the beginning of the year, that's where I was. I was bitter and I was complaining about everything because I was too busy and I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. And so when God pulled me away, he was like, we gotta get this part of your heart right. Yeah, I'm gonna work on all the physical stuff, but spiritually, we gotta fix this part of you. The enemy had a heyday for a little bit with my hurt. I felt like 
When you're pulled away from everybody, I don't know if that's ever been your case, I just felt like, where are they? Where are the people who are supposed to be in my corner supporting me? And I began to allow the enemy to convince me that that was not okay. And as I began to cry out to God, like, this is bothering me, God. You know what he said? He reminded me of the seasons. Y'all, there are seasons in our life where God removes people because he needs to remove them. And then he brings people into that season because that's what you need. And so for me, the Lord began to kind of remind me of those seasons and say, Camilla, you don't need those people right now because all you're doing is, is kind of using them as a crutch. You need me. So I've removed them so that you can focus on our relationship and me being your person, me being your healer, me being the one who is there for you. And I had to step back and go, oh, God, forgive me. And y'all had to get on my knees beside my bed and repent. I had to ask God to forgive me because I was so angry that those people were removed. And he said, Camilla, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And I had to, to, let, to remind myself that he's in control. And he knows way better than I ever would. So why would I not trust him in that? The next thing that we have to do is recognize his presence. Verse 17 says, The Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. John 14, 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you comfortless. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. There's no place in our lives where God is not. He is in every moment, in every thought, in every whisper, in every breath. David says in Psalms 139, God, I'm so lonely. King Saul is chasing me and I'm alone in a cave. But then I turn my thoughts to you. Where can I go away from your presence? If I go up to the heaven, you're there. Anywhere on earth, you're there. I can't get away from you. When I was in and out of the hospitals, you're lonely in this season because nobody can be with you, right? You're all alone. And so for me, it was just a really hard struggle and so when I went in for COVID, you can hear everything happening. And you can hear people passing away down the hall from you. And you just feel so scared and so lonely. And I remember I had been singing this song throughout my entire hospitals for, you know, hospital visits for the eight months. It's a song called Believe For It by C.C. Winans. And I would turn that song on. I didn't care what nurse or doctor was walking in the room. If I was in the middle of worship, they were just gonna have to wait a second. Because sometimes I had to get my mind back focused on the one who was gonna heal me. And whether he was gonna heal me through his hand or he was gonna use those doctors and nurses, I had to focus on that. And I'll just say that it reminded me that I needed to pray harder, that I needed to remember that there was nowhere that I was going in this season that he was not with me. Every single time somebody from the church walked in my room and they were like, we saw your name. We just wanted to come check on you. I was like, you are here, God. Every time I picked up the phone to talk about an issue with our insurance provider, do you know that every single phone call, it was somebody from this church? Y'all wanna tell me God is not in the details? He is in the details. He is with us in every single moment and we have to recognize his presence. And then we have to empathize with others' needs. We have to remember that it's not just about us. We can't just always turn our attention to ourselves. Look, look inward. Y'all, we have to start putting our focus back on other people. Where are the people in your life right now that need support? Who are the people in your life right now that are lonely? 2 Timothy 4, 17 says, The Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be able to be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. He's lonely at the end of his life, but he never forgot that his responsibility was to serve people. Maybe you're in a season where you have been striving to have a child and you just got the news that it's just not gonna be possible. So what do you do with that? What do you do with all that love and all of that hope that you had inside of you? 
There are so many kids that need your support and they need your care and they need your love. You can turn that love outward. Or maybe you are in a space where you see a group of kids over here and they need a mentor. And you take your time and you sacrifice what's going on in your life to go just be present with them because maybe that's all they need. Or maybe you're a single person and you keep asking like, God, why aren't you sending me a spouse or why isn't this working out? I would challenge you to get alone with the Lord and ask him, where has he placed people in your life that you didn't even know you were already blessing? We feel lonely, but if we step back and we allow God to use us to bless others in our season, I promise you it will be so much more of a blessing than you could ever imagine. We can reach out to people and we can start building bridges and we can say, I love you. And maybe they don't feel seen. And that's the only way that we will combat loneliness is to love. And I promise that if you begin to love on people, it's gonna come back to you immeasurably more than you could ever imagine because that is how God created us. He loved us first. And so when we do that, it comes back to us. Some of you ask like, how does God know anything about loneliness? Well, let me just remind you that he sent the son of God and he walked the ultimate loneliness. He's getting ready to be crucified on the cross and he's there that night and he's in the garden of Gethsemane and what happened? All of his people fall asleep. And then the soldiers come to get him, to take him away to trial and all his disciples fled. And then Peter denies him three times. And then he's placed on the cross and he knows he's about to take on all of our sin debt. He knows what's about to happen and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our God knows what it means to be lonely. He knows what it means to meet you in that place. And so we ask Jesus to be present with us, to show us how to turn from being inward people to loving others, just like he did for us. He sacrificed everything so that we could have an authentic relationship with our Father. And so just know that you're not alone. No matter what the world tells you, no matter what people tell you, you are not alone. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. God, we thank you that in those moments when we can't see beyond our circumstances, that you remind us that you are always here, that you are always present. I wanna do something a little different right now. And everybody's eyes are closed and nobody's looking around, but I'm gonna ask you to be brave for just one second. And if you are in a season of transition or you are currently struggling with loneliness, I'm just gonna ask you to just stand up because I want you to know that I see you. Not only does God see you, but I see you. Thank you all for being brave. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, I'm gonna pray for you. So stay standing for just one second. Father, I just thank you for the courage that it took to say, I'm in a season of loneliness. Father, right now, I ask that you will just fill these people with your insurmountable comfort. God, I pray that you will bring them peace in their hearts to know that you are with them. God, that you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. God, I pray that whatever is happening in their world, Lord, that you will begin to bring a peace to the chaos. God, that you will begin to remind them who they are in you. God, I ask right now that as they leave here today, that they will feel your presence in a new and fresh way. God, that they will remember that they are sons and daughters of the King, of the creator of this universe who loves them more than anyone else could ever love them. And so Lord, we ask for you to do these things in your mighty name, amen. You may be seated with heads still bowed and eyes still closed. There are some of you who have never accepted Christ into your heart. 
And maybe this is the moment where you say, I don't want to be lonely anymore. And I don't even know, Camilla, what you're talking about. So I want to give you the opportunity to allow Jesus to come into your heart, to wreck your world, and to remind you that you are not alone. That he came so that not only could we have eternal life, but he came so that we could have an authentic relationship with our Father, to where we had someone with us at all times. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And so I just wanna ask you, if this is you, and you wanna accept Christ, because not only do you not wanna be alone, but you wanna feel the presence and the power of the Lord to just raise your hand across this room. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you, thank you. Thank you so much. With your heads bowed, let's just pray this prayer together. Jesus, thank you for coming for me. Thank you for your spirit that is alive in me. God, I give my life to you today and I ask that you continue to guide me to follow you. This is a journey and I'm in, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you guys.